Now we'll be talking about uh, Gardner documentation component or engineering, if you want. I'm Gary Povov, software engineer at SAP. One thing I wanted to, to give you a heads up is uh, this could easily be like a five, six hours presentation. <laughs> there is really a lot to that can be discussed behind that. I fully realize that I'm going to try to squeeze this in some 20 minutes just to you know give you the feel of what uh, what is there and what could be there. So my plea is that uh, just feel free to to jump back, uh, get in touch with me and my colleagues, Phil and with uh, whom we've been working uh, uh, head to head together for the last months uh, on this project. Uh, Feel free to to reach out to us to to discuss uh, the opportunities here, and uh, you know if uh, if you have some thoughts about what you're going to see. With that in mind, let's jump in jump in directly into the topic. A brief uh, travel back in time, uh, circa September 2020, uh, around which uh, we actually started heavily investing into engineering the documentation process. We basically took a minute, well, it was not a minute, it was quite a lot more, but uh, uh, figure of speech, you know, we took a minute to um, assess the situation back then and where where we want to go uh, without any limitations. Um, at that time, basically, we had uh, a significantly dispersed documentation all around uh, multiple repositories. That was the reality. We had uh, a single mono repository, the Gardner documentation repository, where the documentation was largely Gardner core centric. Um, but there was also a myriad of documents that were all around the Gardner organization repositories. Um, in fact, there was uh, also in a lot of internal documentation in SAP. So all this made it uh, kind of a pain point for somebody looking for information to just land on the most uh, obvious place like Gardner.cloud and uh, find the documentation for the component that they need to. Well, in fact, they wouldn't be able to, even if they wanted to, simply because uh, at that time, the documentation was, as I said, uh, largely Gardner centric. So if you were looking for some documentation about a particular extension, you had to go like to the extension repository. And uh, that, was, that was a particular problem if you wanted, for example, if if, uh, if you had some component version in mind, let's say you, you found out uh, a component version in your landscape uh, and you want to know something more about this component for a reason. Uh, how do you figure out where is the documentation for this particular version of that component? It's uh, the, the tip of the history of uh, the documentation from the component doesn't always work. Sometimes your landscapes are actually lag, lag behind the latest release. That's quite a usual case. And even if you wanted, you just had to actually go to the Gardner organization, explore the documentation there and eventually find the, the repository and eventually find the version for, for the documentation and drill down into it. Now add to the mix also uh, internal repositories, which makes it uh, even harder and so on and so on. Uh, and twice reproducible state of component documentation. I hope it's pretty visible. It's uh, at, at the minimum, uh, it's uh, sometimes, uh, uh, what are bitters if something is a feature request or it's a bug report? Obviously, when something is described to be functioning in a, prop, in a certain way and it's not uh, behaving like that, it's, it's a bug or it's a regression or something that you, you need to prioritize accordingly. If it's an enhancement request, you can prioritize differently. So it's, uh, it boils down to also do, to the capacity of the people and the right prioritization and stuff like this. You can go even further, but uh, let's cut it here. So, um, Another pay point uh, that emerged eventually was um, that we wanted actually to reuse this documentation. That's, that there was a huge amount of documentation, but we wanted it reused instead of rewriting it uh, for different uh, different publishing channels. So one obvious publishing channel that was uh, the Garland.cloud site. Uh, lots of the documentation, as I mentioned, is uh, not on the repository that is intended to, to publish on, on the Garden Cloud, actually, website. But it was intended to, to publish on a different channel. That's GitHub itself. That's the documentation that resides on the component repositories themselves. And uh, for example, for SAP as a stakeholder to the Gardner project, uh, it, there was a necessity also to, to bring uh, 
this external documentation internally in house, so we so we can reuse it instead of uh, you know copying it and uh, losing uh, connection to to the to the outside with it. Uh, but as you can guess, uh, all this comes along with uh, its own technology stack uh, and demands. So, in a word, documentation that's been designed to work on GitHub wouldn't work for. Uh, uh, something that's published with Hugo, like uh, the garden.cloud, it wouldn't work uh, also for something that's uh, needed to be published uh, internally, not only because of the technology stack, by the way, but also but because of uh, sometimes of the content, uh, content itself, uh, the way things are presented. Let's say for governance rule, you wouldn't want, uh, let's say, some uh, pull requests or issues quoted directly inside. You want to change links and stuff. Anyway, it's in a word, it's, it's a nightmare to, to maintain multiple publishing channels and technologies uh, from a single source, although it's, it's an obvious, uh, obvious great, <laughs> great approach. Um, all this actually boils down, boils down to, to several simple things. It's, it's how you scale. I mean, obviously, human human um, human resource uh, or let's, let's not call it call us human resource but humans are expensive and um, we should invest our efforts uh, mostly in creative tasks not uh, you know copying files from here to there uh, restructuring uh, links inside because of that uh, doing uh, some manual transformations uh, importing things manually all, all this boring stuff that's that's not for humans. This is for machines. I mean, come on, we are all quite native here. We are what about, uh, you know, automating all things that can be automated. Uh, and, and in a word, we decided that this is how we want actually to approach all these problems. And uh, we did what an engineer would do with the documentation. We started to engineer the documentation. Actually, we started to treat it as code. And we started to shift to, to this uh, paradigm, documentation as code. Our read of this is uh, we apply software engineering methods and tools to deliver versatile uh, documentation that's reproducible. And uh, we do this at large scale because it's largely automated and the human factor is really, really limited or completely eliminated in the process, leaving only creative tasks for, them, for us. So just as an example, uh, here is kind of a recipe, a recipe for uh, how a multi-component OSS project like Gardener um, applies this concept. For example, uh, this is actually a, a real world example. This is how we deliver documentation, the Gardener component documentation on the, uh, the Gardener.cloud uh, website. So um, what are you looking at here? There are several stages basically. Uh, that everything goes around and they're orchestrated by uh, a continuous integration, continuous development, CCI, CD, basically. In our case, this is concurse, uh, our concurse. And uh, the stages are as usual, the design and release and build uh, stages and finally publishing. So things start as usual on your desktop when somebody wants to, to design documentation, that's let's call these guys content producers. Uh, they want to, to design some documentation, um, then you employ the, the usual, uh, you know, GitHub uh, collaborative pull request process uh, with peer reviews, discussions and stuff. Uh, of course, you use Git for versioning and everything. Um, and uh, you can use your favorite ID for designing uh, the, the documentation for, for producing the content for it. Uh, and all tools that you want to, you know, ensure quality control and stuff. Uh, but we, we also provide uh, a ready-made collection of tools that uh, comes in very handy for, for this task, for linting your documentation, for checking uh, dead links, for spell checks, all these uh, you know, uh, trivial things that you need to, to accomplish before pushing something uh, that's called documentation and it's readable and nice. Um, it's meant to be, uh, it can be used locally, but it's uh, also meant to be uh, usable um, as part of uh, you know the, the usual pull request merge process as a quality gate, for example, like I said, to, to link your documentation uh, and check for errors, trivial errors for it before merging. And this is uh, how it's used. Uh, essentially, eventually your, your documentation makes its way to uh, 
the component where that, that it describes. That's uh, another change. We we want you to to use uh, you, you know to to realize the documentation exactly uh, the components that it describes. It's it's going to recite in the uh, in the component repositories. We are going to take care to move it around wherever we we need it. Uh, and by we, I mean the, the tools that are employed on, on later stages. Something I also want to mention here is that um, something that changes that now we, we want you to think about the documentation in a publishing agnostic way. You, you don't need to care uh, how this is going to publish the technology that, that is going to be used for that. You are going to write a completely normal markdown. Uh, I mean, so far we occasionally used uh, the so-called uh, Hugo shortcodes. Uh, that's uh, this particular technology that we're using for, you know, publishing uh, sites, uh, employs for making up for the for Markdown's uh, simplicity. Uh, but that's no no longer the case. You you just write pretty normal Markdown. The the flavors that we support is uh, common mark and largely GitHub flavors, so you should be good with it. And uh, most of the tools out there out there will happily support you in previewing what uh, what you're producing. All that is in the domain of the content producer. Once the documentation makes its way to the component repository, uh, there is another role. We have a sort of a separation of concerns here. There is another role that could, of course, be the same person, but uh, it could be also another team or something. Uh, or even a different organization that takes care of uh, describing, modeling, how this documentation is going to be actually materialized uh, and published. So and this is why we call them publishers. Um, in the example here and in this recipe, uh, we have uh, this model uh, right beside the documentation and uh, the code inside the documentation repository versioned with it in this uh, .docforge folder as uh, manifest YAML. Inside you'll find basically a DSL that uh, is used to model uh, where are your sources, uh, what is the intended structure, uh, which are the rules for forging the component, uh, the links inside, um, and so on and so on. Uh, but in principle, this uh, this description could reside anywhere. It could be even at uh, some stakeholder X uh, site and uh, the tools that we're going to see on the next stage will happily fetch it from wherever uh, they're fed with uh, depending on the, on the model. So um, anyway, so we have uh, the documentation sources at the, the Gardener component uh, repository. We have the, the manifest describing uh, an intended structure of it. Oh, and you can have multiple, of course, of this. You can have multiple manifests describing different uh, different uh, structures because no, stru no single structure is sufficient. Uh, but the essential here is that basically uh, the model of the documentation is uh, not tightly bound to the physical structure of uh, the documentation in the in the repository. You can re change it however you want uh, and the tools are going to, to make the magic behind to, to realize that. Um, so what happens next is uh, let's say the component owners release this component. Uh, of course the CICD realizes that and uh, notifies the component that is, uh, is going uh, the component that's going to actually trigger the, the whole build uh, process. In our case, this is the website generator component. Uh, it tells us that uh, this component takes, uh, has an upgrade of the dependency version and we kick uh, a build process. So basically the first thing is uh, we get uh, this to DocForge. It takes the model of uh, this component, this uh, described in this manifest YAML file. And uh, that's what I, what I just said. It's going to actually realize the structure that has been described inside. It's going to fetch the sources from wherever they, they're described to be reciting. It's going to structure them however it's described to be. It's going to take care for the links inside, which is often overlooked. It doesn't simply copy things from here to there. It uh, also takes care to uh, reconcile these uh, crosslinks that normally reside inside the sources so that uh, the documentation uh, is usable even after restructuring it. And eventually you end up with uh, a bundle of markdown files structured according to, to the model. 
uh, we feed them into the Hugo because this is our choice of uh, website builder from Markdown to uh, static HTML. And we'll, we get the HTML for, for the website. Uh, the last step is to you know, push this to and realize with that uh, continuous deployment. We push this uh, to the Gardner website repository, which is uh, the repository that we use to uh, serve content via GitHub pages. That's kind of an exemplary way you could organize things. A lot of things can uh, actually be replaced by your own mechanism. It's meant to, to be reusable even beyond the, the Gardner project. Uh, but uh, yeah, let's, let's take a look at uh, which are the, the enablers here. So uh, one hand, as I mentioned, optionally the, the docs tool belt, which is meant to, you know, um, realize quality control on your documentation source material. Um, something I didn't mention, but uh, we also deliver for since a couple of days, it's uh, a standalone gardener team that is used by the Hugo site builder so that we, we can uh, effortlessly realize uh, same consistent gardener look and feel on uh, different websites that uh, need to share that. Um, another thing is the is Hugo as one of the most popular uh, static website builders based on Markdown, Mar Markdown source. Of course, uh, some CI/CD orchestration. In our case, this is uh, our own concourse implementation and uh, the component model on top of that, or it could be GitHub Actions or whatever you employ for that. And uh, the usual suspects, you know, Git, GitHub, uh, some ID, maybe Netlify, maybe GitHub pages, maybe whatever that you use to, to publish uh, at the end of the day. But uh, what's really essential, it's, uh, it's the DocForge tool in this whole thing, because it realizes declarative documentation structures forging, meaning it realizes the concept that you can model documentation uh in in and you can use many different models of the same documentation and it's still going to end up like uh usable um sources for publishing somewhere so uh, as you saw in this example uh, the whole tool set operates on something that uh, we call the component uh, sort of a documentation component we define this as uh, something that obviously contributes documentation and uh, this documentation is structured declaratively with uh, a DSL in, let's say, YAML manifests. And uh, these manifests basically declare your intention, intended uh, documentation structures. Um, now, based on this concept of documentation components, we um, we saw a couple of new emerging opportunities and uh, we've been working on that for the last couple of months. So sorry for not being all too responsive. We, we've been really deep under the water to, to see if this is going to fly and uh, invested quite a lot of effort into, into that. So um, one of these, they're actually quite, um, quite related. One builds on top of the other, but uh, they could be important for different scenarios. So this, this is why we, we distinguish them. Uh, so one is uh, a so-called doc hub portal. It has a catchy name. It's like app hubs, but app hub, but uh, for uh, documentation. A doc hub portal for all the components uh, documentation versions that are available in Gardener. And we uh, want to see the documentation as uh, first class, the components documentation as first class citizen in the Gardener landscapes themselves available. So uh, first, let's, let's, let's take a short glimpse at uh, what is a doc hub portal as a concept. Well, uh, as I mentioned, it's, uh, it aims at providing all Gardener component versions, documentations in one play, place. Um, a simple realization of that concept is being constructed right, uh, right as we speak at uh, the Gardener cloud. Currently, what you see there is uh, basically a single component documentation. It's the Gardener component, but soon we are going to see actually all the all the Gardener components in the Gardener organization with uh, each one with uh, all the its document versions. Um, it's meant to be extensible and also include components that are actually beyond Gardener, so you can build uh, really uh, comprehensive uh, portals for for documentation. Uh, it can include also cross component material like um, <clears throat> cross cutting tutorials, maybe cross cutting concepts, uh, things like that. Uh, it's, uh, it's designed to be reliably re reproducible, <clears throat> a, key, a key requirement for documentation, as, as I mentioned. 
uh, and it's designed to be reusable outside the Grana project itself. You can actually take the concept as a, as a res recycle and uh, apply it uh, somewhere else, maybe changing some of, some of the components or not, but it's, it's really a concept. Um, a short glimpse at uh, what it's looking uh, like. Because we are in the really early stages of uh, realizing this, uh, we started with the next thing that I'm going to show you. Um, it's it's not very suitable for for a live demonstration right now. I mean, what you see here is uh, is not a Photoshop or something. It's uh, still somewhat live, but it needs uh, some manual intervention to to make it work. And these are the things that we're going to defeat in the upcoming months, uh, so we can have it completely automated. But at the end of the day, it's going to to look something like this. So um, the Doc Hub itself, as you see, it's uh, it will be available on the Garana.cloud. Uh, website in the documentation section. So what we call DocHub is basically the things that are under the components. Um, it's going to list all the components that deliver some sort of the documentation that are documentation components in the, in the sense that I just defined. Um, and uh, once you click uh, one of these tasks, for example, you're going to land on sort of a microsite that also lists, um, has a selector of uh, the versions for, for these components so you can jump uh, between them and uh, basically shows you the intended structure uh, delivered by this uh, uh, this component that has been described in uh, such a manifest file that I mentioned earlier. The next thing, uh, it's uh, in more advanced uh, actually state. Uh, it's sort of a subset of this whole thing, uh, the, the DOHUB thing. Uh, is the documentation for the components bill of material in a particular landscape. Meaning, uh, again, it's going to, to deliver the documentation, uh, all versions, of, not all versions, but particular versions of the documentation only for the components that are deployed in the, in the landscape. Uh, it's designed to be a gardener component, so it can be optionally deployed or not in the landscape, depending on whether you want on or not documentation inside. Um, it declares itself a sort of a bill of material for the documentation components. That's uh, kind of a overlay on top of the component model of uh, the garden component model dedicated to documentation components. It kind of amends this with uh, documentation aspect. Uh, and it's reliably reproducible. Basically, we uh, create the documentation with every release of every component. We uh, create a snapshot of the documentation. And it's available as uh, Docker images, that can be served not only in the landscape, but uh, in a completely different uh, environment or even with completely different technology. Uh, it can leverage the, it should leverage the garden component model and landscaper. So this is something that we hope to see in the, um, the future. I currently, uh, this is being validated inside uh, SAP because uh, there is no bill of material think concept that uh, we can, immediately reuse uh, right now, but uh, we hope with the advance of uh, the upper hub landscaper and uh, the Gardner component model together, um, we, the, the project is going to consider also the documentation uh, as code as in the way that we deliver it and uh, effectively uh, make use of it. And uh, yeah, the things can be integrated. So how does it look? It's it's uh, this this thing is completely live this time, but it's a screenshot simply because um, there is not much. It doesn't make much of a demo. I mean, you're going to see the simple interface, and that's all. The whole magic happens behind the scenes, and uh, it's not, it's th therefore it's not suitable for for demonstrating. And uh, this is exactly the way it should be. It's uh, silently silently does its job. Uh, automatically builds uh, with every component release a new. Uh, documentation, landscape documentation version, and publishes it uh, for you to, to take a look at. But basically, as you, you can already observe the similarities uh, with uh, the Doc Hub concept, uh, this is because the two borrow the same presentation and building technologies behind. Uh, anyway, you're, you're going to land into a site like this, and once you click on some of the components, you're going to, to land to the microsite for, for this component and explore the details for, for this particular version that's deployed in this particular landscape uh, that you're looking at right now. Again, the structure that you see here for each component is uh, 
specific to the component. The component itself declares how how things will look like declaratively. So in a nutshell, uh, it's already 11.30, almost 20 minutes. That's very good for me. Um, the takeaways in a nutshell. So um, with docs engineering, we are putting automation as a priority. It's actually key for us. We uh, largely have managed to eliminate manual efforts with the validation scenarios that, uh, that we have. Uh, we are very happy with the results, uh, but still not completely satisfied and so you continue to uh, in this direction. Um, automation is key in, in these things. In these things. Uh, we want you at the end of the day to focus only on creative tasks and as, as far as documentation development is concerned. Um, you should start modeling your documentation structures to, to enable tool support and therefore automation. Uh, models, uh, modeling and declarative approach uh, actually uh, abstract you from physical structures and enable this uh, reuse of and reproducibility of documentation that we've been talking about. Um, there is a new landscape documentation component emerging. We hope to, to see it also uh, readily available as is uh, someday on the open source side, but even today, the, the practices and the tool sets and the recipe how, how it's implemented, it's, uh, uh, it's already uh, tested to, to be working and it's uh, possible to take over and adopt it. Just get in touch with us so we can discuss how, how it's achieved. Uh, there is an exemplary doc hub concept that is being implemented currently on Garden Cloud, employing very similar concepts as landscape documentation. Uh, that's going to uh, realize the, the long anticipated uh, one stop shop for all the documentation uh, for the gardener components ever, everywhere. And uh, finally, uh, use DocForge and DocStoolBell together with the CICD to as crucial elements uh, to implement documentation as, as code. When you have multiple repos, especially, uh, it worked for us as a multi-component project. I think it's going to work for every other OSS project that shares the same characteristics. And with that, I'll conclude. Thank you. I'm opening up for questions, if any. Hi, uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, I have two questions. Maybe the first one will answer the second. Uh, what's the rationale for putting the manifest into the component repo and not have that uh, outside uh, in a central place because the component then doesn't need to know about uh, uh, the semantics of this manifest and the doc forge. Correct. As I mentioned during the presentation, um, technically both are possible. Um, meaning the manifest could be anywhere as long as uh, doc forge can, uh, it can be fed in the, in the doc forge. Um, the reason why we, we chose this is uh, more of a practical kind of, of thing. First of all, um, we had difficulties with uh, maintaining uh, things centrally before with the model repository and so, sorts of stuff. Uh, second of all, we, and, and because of that, we want to try a different approach where the component owners also own the, the way things are structured if they want to. Um, but uh, above all, um, we want, we employ here kind of uh, an auto discovery mechanism to, to make things a little bit easier. So uh, currently the only thing that you need uh, to, not, not currently, but that, that's something that we're working currently on. Uh, but uh, what we aim at is uh, that you have, as long as you publish a dot doc forge folder with a manifest YAML inside, similar to what you do with, uh, let's say the dot CI pipeline definitions, uh, we should be able to, you know, sense that uh, that's a component that wants to declare some documentation and automatically uh, declare a dependency from the website generator to, to it and start, uh, st start waiting for release updates for, from that component automatically. Of course, the other approach to maintain all this thing uh, in one big manifest or several manifests in the website generator itself is also possible, but it will require the manual effort from the component owners to, to go there and uh, you know update the this YAML file in website generator. 
So um, yeah, that that was the reason to to kind of uh, make it a little bit more transparent uh, with regards to who is uh, actually taking over and building your stuff. Of course, it comes with uh, what you just mentioned. Uh, in that way, the component owners need to know a little bit about, uh, you know, the DocForge DSL used in the manifests. Uh, but I hope it's not all too complex because the very minimal, um, the very minimal manifest is like five, five or six lines of code that are kind of self-explanatory. But yeah, this this was the rationale behind. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, two ways of looking at it, each is right. Uh, the other one I had was uh, what happens uh, with the versions. Um, so if I delete something in the manifest, change it uh, in the next release, the rendering is done based on the manifest uh, for that version or it's a common manifest? Uh, currently, if you, you can maintain the manifests per, per version, meaning, um, we can we can sniff, for example, for DocForge manifests in the in the master, or you can maintain them by by version. It's it's a matter of realization because we still haven't actually realized this uh, lightweight weight of uh, you know uh, figuring figuring out which which are the documentation component repositories by availability of this uh, DocForge. Uh, it's open to discussion which one would be the best approach. I, again, I, I would make the analogy here kind of uh, like with the CI pipelines, because there you can have one in the master and that's the one that's going to be used largely, or you can have per branch configuration, which, whichever works. Uh, technically, you can, uh, for example, build with DocForge uh, also using, uh, using uh, templates for the manifests. The manifests themselves can be Golang template, templates. And uh, we can provide versions to, to DocForge as uh, template variables that can be applied there as well. So one thing we can do is, for example, you can define your manifests uh, parameterizing the versions that are inside. And once we receive uh, from the CICD a dependency version upgrade for that component, we can uh, build the components providing uh, the version as a variable to the template with DocForge. So that's also possible. Georgi, is there a way to try this out very quickly with an example? Do you have some pointers? Uh, try which one? Yeah, the new uh, build recipes and, 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 and so on. Or is that coming? Uh, this one that you are looking at, it's uh, it's uh, almost finished, but uh, what we want actually, where, where we want to land is here. And that will take uh, maybe some time to, to accomplish. What can be what can be checked, but uh, at this stage only internally bef before we finish the whole validation thing and everything is uh, the landscape documentation thing. This is built based on the um, component model the Gardner component model, and uh, we're using, uh, you know, concourse below, and uh, the bill of material that's uh, at this point available only uh, internally for the SAP Gardner landscapes. This is one of the obstacles to, to release it internally. As long as we have such a concept uh, somehow externally available to, you know, play around with and build something on top of it on the open source site, uh, we'll be more than happy to publish this, but it's just a matter of availability of uh, the concept of bill of material for a landscape that's stopping us. Okay. I think you need uh, to produce uh, an easy uh, to understand example for, um, yeah, um, for our community because uh, there's, uh, yeah, th there'll be some, many people interested to also uh, produce documentation, right? Mm -hmm. We have these ongoing discussions on, around that. Yeah. Absolutely, it's it's to be to be honest, it's not a trivial process. I mean, you see, there's a lot of um, a lot of tools that are involved. Uh, if you start changing some of them, because many of them, as I mentioned, are optional. If you start changing them, of course, you you have to adapt yeah. 
this this recipe. Uh, but I believe that uh, what we realize on the uh, with the website generator repository, it it can be taken as sort of an example and something to discuss upon yeah. or and build upon. That can turn out to be our example for the community. Yeah. Thank you, Jogji. Very yep. nice.